You don't deserve to be free. We're not the ones smothering the world. You are. The individual is supposed to be weak, but far from powerless. A single person has the potential to ruin the world. And the age of digitized communication has given even more power to the individual. Too much power for an immature species. For an immature, immature, immature. Two million dollars. That's how much money you can earn by discovering hidden vulnerabilities in a smartphone, website, or operating system. These high stake rewards have been around for years, but they're better known as bug bounties. Tech giants use these bounty programs to challenge hackers, researchers, and security experts to break into the devices. Legally, of course. Now with two million dollars, the possibilities are endless. But only the sharpest minds can claim the biggest payouts from the world's biggest players. Microsoft, Samsung, Google. All of them offer massive rewards, but they all pale in comparison to Apple, whose top bounty is worth a staggering $2 million. This is the story of how one man uncovered a fatal flaw in Apple's iOS, an exploit powerful enough to make every iPhone vulnerable. How he discovered it, how he executed it, and how he lost it all. The iPhone 6 was still on the shelves, with Apple preparing to release its next model that September. Apple's device had become the default smartphone, and its security was a major selling point iOS was so secure, in fact, that even the FBI had to spend $1.3 million to break into a single iPhone connected to the San Bernardino terrorist attack. With an iPhone, you were told you were safe. No one, not even law enforcement at the highest level, could get into your device. But what if nobody needed to break into it? What if all an attacker had to do was gain your trust, send you a single malicious link, and instantly take control of your phone? But not just yours but potentially every iPhone at that time. That's exactly what happened. Thousands of iPhones were quietly turned into a botnet, a network of comprised of zombie devices, all controlled by one exploit. Normally, botnets are used to launch a DDoS attack, distributed denial of service. That's when thousands of infected devices flood a website or service with so much fake traffic, it collapses. It's the same buzzword you might remember kids shouting in Call of Duty lobbies. I can't DOS a whole team. I'm learning how to DOS. But in reality, a DDoS attack can cripple banks, retailers, or even government systems. But here's the twist. A botnet built from smartphones could launch something even more dangerous. A TDoS attack. Or known as a telephony denial of service. It works just like a DDoS attack, but instead of overwhelming a website, it floods phone lines. If you direct enough zombie devices to dial the same number at the same time, the target's phone system collapses under the load. And what if those targets are 911 call centers? Then real people in emergencies can't get through. But this wasn't just a theory. In 2016, this actually occurred. And the scariest part? Almost nobody's heard about it. Normally, a cyber attack this sophisticated would come from a state-sponsored hacker group, but sometimes all it takes is one person. Meet Kumar and Desai. Desai was a brilliant young hacker. He spent his time jailbreaking iPhones, experimenting with vulnerabilities, and staying on top of the latest cybersecurity exploits. By the time he was still a teenager, he was already learning how to break into some of the most secure systems in the world. Not only was he highly skilled, but he also ran a successful YouTube channel called The Hack Spot. The channel focused entirely on hacking, tutorials and exploits for platforms like Instagram, Facebook, and of course, the iPhone. His content wasn't small either. Each video pulled anywhere from 40,000 views to nearly half a million. 
eventually building him an audience of over 100,000 subscribers. All of this came before Desai was even 20 years old. But Desai wasn't satisfied. He wanted to dig deeper into Apple's iOS operating system with the goal of landing one of the biggest bug bounties in the world. And so we got to work. Using JavaScript, Desai created a hidden exploit inside a malicious link. When a victim clicked it, their iPhone would appear to freeze. But in the background, it was following commands. The code could tell your phone to endlessly open emails, close and reopen apps, and even place phone calls without the user's consent. But to make those phone calls, the script had to explicitly include the command, which means when Desai wrote his code, the intention of auto-dialing 911 was built into it. And once he was ready, Desai posted the malicious link directly on his Twitter account, where more than 12,000 people had access to it. Once Desai posted the malicious link, his followers started clicking. Within seconds, hundreds of iPhones were compromised. Pop-ups appeared, screens froze, and suddenly the devices began placing calls on their own. The users couldn't stop it. They could only watch as their iPhone dialed 911 automatically. Calls began flooding into emergency centers across the US, in states like Texas, California, Illinois, and Washington. Dispatchers picked up only to find dead air on the line. And then 911, we call it a deadline. It looks like a simple hang up, but procedure often requires us to call back or even send officers to check the situation. Now imagine dozens of those pouring in at once. Entire public safety answering points. The systems that route 911 calls were instantly overwhelmed. Real emergencies couldn't get through. Arizona took the hardest hit. Desai was living in Maricopa County, and many of his followers were local. In just one minute, over 100 bogus calls slammed into the Paradise Valley Police Department a small agency with only seven full-time dispatchers, with maybe two on duty that night. It was impossible to answer every call. It was like constant, just having that ring, ring, annoying, ring, ring. Dispatcher Michelle Bush on phone duty Tuesday night when they were overflowing with calls, all from a prank. This is a big stress because um, somebody could be dying or needing actual emergency. And when a peace app is flooded, excess calls spill over to surrounding agencies. It's a built-in failsafe, but in this case, it only spread the damage. Like any cyber attack, very quickly, the entire 911 system for Maricopa County went offline. For anyone needing help during that window, there was a real chance 911 was unreachable. The scale and suddenness of the attack triggered an immediate federal response. Within just hours, not only were the local police investigating, but the FBI, FCC, and Department of Homeland Security were already involved. Officials declared it a direct threat to national security and to America's critical infrastructure. Once the dust settled, investigators had no trouble tracking the attack. The malicious link was tied directly to Desai's Twitter account, which pointed to his website, a site that had his name on it and his YouTube channel. It was obvious who carried out the 2016 iPhone hack. During questioning, Desai admitted he had created multiple versions of this exploit. Most were harmless pranks, scripts that opened and closed apps, rebooted devices, or froze screens. The side later claimed he meant to share one of these prank versions, but accidentally posted the code containing the 911 payload instead. Yeah, okay. With the evidence in hand, prosecutors charged him with three felony counts of computer tampering. But freedom wasn't the only thing Desai lost. Apple's official bug bounty program has strict terms. And according to their website, for a reported security vulnerability affecting any Apple platform to be eligible for an Apple Security Bounty Award, you must not disclose it to anyone 
other than Apple until after Apple has released a software update and published a security advisory for the reported security vulnerability. Now, to be fair, this exploit wasn't worth a 2 million maximum payout, but it's likely it fell under Apple's network attack with user interaction category. That bounty ranges from $5,000 to $250,000. Still life-changing money for an 18-year-old. By releasing the exploit publicly to his followers, Desai violated Apple's rules and almost certainly forfeited any payout. Apple eventually patched the vulnerability in iOS 10.3, which was released about five months later. As for Desai, he eventually pled guilty of the charges and was sentenced to three years of probation. And at first glance, that might sound lenient. As a dispatcher, I would have been furious if this happened to my center. But now, working on the technology side of 911, I see it a little bit differently. Desai's actions were reckless and unjustified, but they also exposed a massive cybersecurity vulnerability in America's emergency infrastructure. His so-called accidental attack forced the issue on the nation's radar, pushing agencies to start working on solutions immediately. Had a hostile nation state uncovered this weakness first, the consequences could have been catastrophic. Well, we actually have those results now. You see, researchers wanted to know how could only a few thousand iPhones overwhelm multiple 911 systems in just mere minutes? At Ben Gurion University of the Negev in Israel, three researchers built their own cellular test network modeled on North Carolina's 911 infrastructure. They simulated TDOS attacks using cell phones. Their findings were alarming. Just 6,000 compromised devices could overwhelm an entire state's 911 system. At the national level, only 200,000 phones, about 0.062% of the U.S. population, could cripple emergency services across the entire country. The core issue? By law, any device must be able to call 911, even without a SIM card or carrier. Call centers cannot block numbers. Every call has to be routed to a dispatcher. The very rules designed to make 911 universally accessible also make it highly vulnerable in cyber attacks. In theory, a hostile nation state could scatter deactivated burner phones across major cities. Within minutes, entire metropolitan 911 networks could go dark. Real crimes, medical emergencies, and disasters would go unanswered. Back in 2016, this was a chilling reality. But since then, major upgrades have been underway. The US is rolling out next generation 911, an IP based system with enhanced cybersecurity measures and the ability to detect and block DDoS attacks. The Cybersecurity Infrastructure Security Agency, otherwise known as CISA, created under the Department of Homeland Security, now monitors threats and works directly with the state to protect 911 systems. So while such an attack is still possible in theory, it's far less likely today. And on one final note, obviously if you ever try to carry out a large scale cyber attack on 911, you wouldn't just face computer crime charges you'd almost certainly be labeled as a domestic terrorist and spend the rest of your life in prison. So yeah, probably don't do that. Once the dust settled, investigators had Once the dust settled, investigators had no trouble track. Ugh, fuck. 